Hi, it's James here from the Sprinkle Donut Forge in Moscow, Texas. We're back with our rail spike hinges, and I'll show you what I've done. This is the shorter one. Found the center. Marked my bypass. Marked my holes. I've center punched and cold chiseled this, but I've outlined it with a silver marker so you can see. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, one is longer than the other. So if you can kind of get the common sense solution there make sure the ends are the same and you cut the excess out of the middle keep your bypass the same just a little prong going to be longer you just cut that off what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hacksaw and cut in here and here and here and here to where I'll just have to cold chisel that middle out and then we'll go from there. Well, I'm going to get these in, in the vise and hacksaw, and I'll be right back with you. See you in a minute. Hey, we're back with our former railroad spikes. So here's what we got. Here's the short one. You can see I've hacksawed down to the center line. I'm going to chisel out. Match this one to it. And you can see the areas that I've X'd out are going to be cut off. So in essence, they'll be the same size. So I'm gonna get these in the forge. Now that I've done the cut throughs, I should just have one line in each to chisel out, center punch my holes. So I'm gonna start on them too with a square punch. See you in a minute. That looks hot enough. We're gonna latch it in the hole fast. See how good of a chiseler I am. See if them little pieces will bend out of there. Still stouter than it looks. All right, we're gonna get this back in there. Just loosen it from the hole fast. Flatten it out. Making progress. See you in a minute. All right, round two. Oh, these don't grab very good at all. 
Something with some jaws on it. Ooh. Lost my heat. <laughs> That's all right. I got a heat maker right here behind me. Chisel cuts a wide notch. See you in a minute. All right, here it comes. I've added a soft cutting plate to my anvil. Hopefully avoid any anvil damage. Not that it hadn't had this done a bunch of times without one. warm there it goes one of the little chips popped out already Split. I would file off all this bevel here, but I'm going to try to forge it back down a little bit to save my material. I'm going to do that to both of them, and we'll see you in a minute. I retract my prior statement about forging that part straight because I need a good flat plane to create the barrel of the hinge. Uh, and I've discovered I can stand to lose that much material and still have an acceptable hinge. This is a farrier's rasp. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all have heard about hot rasping, but I'm going to assume in making these hinges that you have no electric or power tools. That's why everything has been done by hand. A uh, farrier's rasp can be used to hog off material. Uh, normally when you're filing, you strike one direction with a farrier's rasp. When you're hot rasping, you just go for it and uh, you have a lighter side and a heavier side just use your best judgment I'm going to heat up a piece and I'm going to demonstrate on one half of the hinge how you hot rasp something with a farrier's file I find it handy to add a handle gives you a little more purchase on it so we'll see you in a minute alright let's pull the piece out of the fire and lock it in the vise and try this out the more wore out the better on a farrier's rasp for hot rasping uh, sadly, I used my good wore out one to make a snake out of. Yes, a snake. And I will make a tutorial video on making a snake from a rasp. It's not my idea, but it's really awesome, and uh, I want to show you all how to do it. Let's proceed with this. Here comes the piece. Kind of. I know this is going to suck the heat right out of it, but. Anyway, it's good and hot. If it grabs, I turn it over.
that's actually pretty impressive. This was a hard, sharp lip, a full bevel. <clears throat> and now, you can see that that rasp is taking care of a lot of material. I'm going to do this to all of these, and uh, I'll get back with you when it's time to start creating the scarf. All right, see you in a minute. All right, we're back. We're going to create the scarf. And uh, by now you've center punched the holes on the front of your hinge. You want the scarf on the back. Because it's going to roll around and touch the front. And it needs to make a cylindrical hole for the rivet. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Center punch marks are on this side. Turn it over. Get it toward the edge of the anvil, but not over the edge. You want to lay that edge down. Don't let it swell up. You want to lay that edge down. Like a carpenter's chisel, kind of, sort of. You got a step in your anvil, it'll help a little bit. Working it over the horn might give you a little bit of roundness, though. I just use that for touch up. Anyway, you can see what I've done here. That's the back facing up. So when you roll that toward the front, that little curl will complete a good cylinder. So I'm going to do that to all the pieces, and then I'll show you how to make the barrel. We're using 5 16 stock for the rivet, and uh, I'll show you how to size that. And then after all that's done, we're going to make a rivet, and we're going to put a hinge together. And uh, we'll go from there. We've got to punch some holes, and we'll get to that at some point. But I'll see you in a minute. All right, here's hoping I got some metal left. I've got a couple of sparkles off of that last one. So I do one. <laughs> That's got to roll off to the front. Okay. So I'm going to show y'all how to curve one over. See if we can't create a hinge barrel. Got her hooked over, got to put some more heat on it so it'll move. And uh, I got a piece of 5 16 round over here. We're going to try and form it around because that's going to be the size of the hinge pin. See you in a minute. All right, let's try to roll this around a little bit. Put that 5 16 stock in there and try to curl this down onto it. Lay it over the edge of the anvil. Try to close that up a little bit. Mm. It ain't rolled completely. I don't know how much of this y'all can see, but that needs to touch and fold under. 
so that needs to roll back. I need more heat to do it, so I'm going to knock this out of there. I'm going to knock out, grab a punch, finish knocking it out. Get that back in. Put that stock in it and try to roll it on up. See you in a minute. All right, let's try to roll this thing. Gotta get that piece of stock in there. I'm gonna get it on the step where I can hit back towards me. I'm losing a lot of heat. Lost a little bit too much heat. I ain't gonna bore you through all four of these. Getting it closed up pretty good. I want to make sure to add enough length. I didn't measure anything. I'm just doing this kind of freehand, freestyle. Never made a pair of hinges out of rail spikes before. We're going to see if we can do it. We'll see you in a minute. All right, let's close this roll. Well, let's try anyway. We're gonna call that successful. You see why I scarf it? That way that hole is more cylindrical. There you go. We're gonna make a rivet next. All right, see you in a minute. Make a rivet.
made a rivet. See you in a minute. After many adjustments with the file, to get it to swing, we get to set the ribbon. Now we gotta make it move. All right, we'll punch some holes. Let's punch a hole. You can see what I'm doing here. We'll punch them out, get all the holes punched, and I'll show you what we got. Alright, the battle is won. One railroad spike. One hinge. There you go. Punch some square holes in there. It don't matter if the holes are square or round. But I prefer to use square nails and clinch them on the other side to mount these. There you go. Got a little slight catch in it, but not bad. There's what we got. I'm glad you hung with me through this, so until next time, bye.